Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I've had one or two inquiries about propagation. How do you check propagation? Well, there's all sorts of ways of checking propagation. You can go onto QRZ and you can see what radio conditions are like or predicted to be like. You can go onto other sites and see predictions. But me personally, I very often just want to know what the conditions are like where I am at that particular time of the day. Because conditions can change quite rapidly, particularly in the HF bands, and that's what we're primarily talking about. How do you find what conditions are like on the HF bands? Is it worth spending too much time hunting for stations, or is the band not really open that much? And of course, as we come into sporadic E um, period, it's handy to know what conditions are like at that very moment, and at the time or the location where you are, because sporadic E is very selective. And we're coming towards the sporadic E um, period now, and it could be that you can hear a station that is, I don't know, a thousand miles away on um, 10 meters and is got a strong signal and somebody else know, 50 miles away can't even hear them. It's that, it's that specific, it's that local and it's forever changing. But more generally, we sometimes want to know what conditions are like. You know, sometimes I get up in the morning and I think, I wonder what, whether the band's open to the Pacific or not. Well, I could switch it on and have a tune around and... I couldn't hear anything, but that wouldn't necessarily mean the band is not open. Because if there's nothing on from the Pacific, then I won't hear it. And if I'm not called, call, calling CQ, then there's no chance I will be heard in the Pacific because I'm not transmitting. So it could be both stations at either end are listening, but there's no apparent activity. So the band is dead. Well, no, the band may not be dead. So let me tell you what I do. I mainly rely on reverse beacon. I wanted to be asked about reverse beacon. It's very easy. Just go into Google, do a search, type in reverse beacon, and up on the screen will come reverse beacon. And you want to select DX. And the first thing to do is to actually transmit, because unless you transmit, the beacon network won't hear you. But basically, the reverse beacon network is a network of beacons around the world but instead of sending signals they are listening for listening for signals and if they recognize your signal they will pop up on the screen and say they've heard you they say when you heard when they heard you what your signal strength is, is and so forth and also the distance which is quite interesting so first of all you need to transmit now the bad news is you have to transmit morse code sorry about that but you have to transmit morse code but don't switch off because you don't actually have to be able to or be adept at Morse code. Many transceivers now have got memories in and you can actually type in a short message in the memory uh, channel on the on the transceiver. Let me show you. Icon IC73, which I've got here. You can see on the screen. Um, I can select a memory channel. I can go into a memory channel and I can type in a message. Generally speaking, uh, the, the correct thing to do is to type in your course or your te type in a message first of all. Test, test, test. T E S T T E S T D, which means from, and then your call sign two times. So test, test, or possibly three tests. Test, test, test. D G three O J V, whatever your call sign is. Now, once you've got that message in, you can then send that message. And that's all the reverse beacon is looking for. You could send CQ, but if you're not going to, if you're not adept at CW and you're not looking for contacts, we just want to get a signal report, then send out test. It's the more polite thing to do. Test, 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 G3OJV. And you put that into your memory and you press your memory button and the transceiver will send that message. You can send it several times, probably worth sending it two or three times. And then go back to receive and then go on to reverse beacon, type in your call sign as a DX station, DX G3OJV, and then press return. And on the screen, you'll see two things. You'll see a map showing where the stations are that have heard you. And you'll also see quite a lot of detail about how they heard you, how far away they are, what their call sign is, uh, what the signal strength is, what the time of the day was, and so forth. And so you very quickly get an idea of where the band is open to and where it's not open to. 
Now I went on this morning actually on to 20 metres and the 20 metres seemed to be pretty quiet. There was a few stations on the CWN but I put in reverse beacon and sure enough there was no openings at all, no apparent openings to uh, VK, ZL or any of the Pacific stations. There was openings to uh, USA, not too, not too uh, bad, about um, 10 or 12 dB above noise and I was running 100 watts. And there was a couple of stations in Africa, and then the rest of them were spread, spread, spread around Europe. So it told me there was no opening to the Pacific. Now, let's go on further. Another thing you can do is you can just listen for stations. Listen for stations that are calling CQ. Now, some of these stations will be running higher power and probably bigger antennas. So pick out a station where you can hear them calling CQ and they think, well, it's a pretty strong signal in Europe. I wonder. Um, what is running. You can go onto QRZ for example, look at his call sign, S go onto QRZ, see what antenna system he's, he's got, see what sort of power he's likely to be running. Then enter his call sign into the reverse beacon network and press return and you can see what stations around the world are here in him. Now if he's running a kilowatt or 500 watts and you've got a 300 Yagi at 20 meters above the ground and he's also not getting any replies from the Pacific, you can bet your bottom dollar that the band conditions are not open to the Pacific. And of course it's the same around the rest of the world. So it's very interesting to hear a call sign, go onto QRZ, type in the call sign, see what the guy is likely to be using, go into reverse beacon, enter his call sign in, and see what stations around the world are receiving it. It's quite interesting that. Now, one other thing that um, I do use, and it's a very good method of seeing whether the band is likely to be open and 10 meters is a good example 10 meters can be wide open with signals all over the world or it can be pretty dead uh, and I, I switched on about an hour ago and uh, well I show you I went across the band and there wasn't much there until I came across the FT8 channel. And sure enough, on FT8, there's some fairly healthy signals. Some of them are about S5, S6, but there's one or two S8 or S9. Now, the interesting fact is that if I can hear some decent FT8 signals, then the band must be open. Now, I don't operate FT8. I've only ever used FT8 on VHF, but I don't operate FT8. And you don't really need to know so much whether um, you can re receive it or not. The fact is, if the signal's there, there is propagation. I grant you it doesn't give you any information, and if you do operate FT8, of course you've got an advantage, because you can actually see where the signal's coming from. But, if you haven't got FT8 and you don't operate FT8, it's still an indication. If you can hear S6, S7, S8 signals on 10 meters, then there is propagation there. And it's very useful, FT8 is very useful on what is apparently a dead band. If you can't hear FT8 or the signals are really, really well down, then you bet your bottom dollar that band is not open and you want to move on to another band. So that's my recommendation for a quick check on what pro propagation is like. It's not terribly scientific in some ways, but it is very accurate in other ways. I mean, if I can hear signals, then I know the band's open. Likewise, if I know that stations around or monitoring stations around the world are hearing me, then there is propagation there. It's very, very simple, very quick and very accurate. So, a very short video on finding out whether the band is open or not. And it's very interesting. I'll tell you what, it really is interesting to listen to other stations calling CQ, go into the QRZ, see what they're running, see what they are or how, where they are being heard around the world. Quite interesting. So uh, on a rainy day and uh, you just don't want to uh, spend too much time on the air or you don't feel going, like going on the air, still listen to these stations and find out where they are. Look up on QRZ and uh, you can learn a bit about them. There we are. That's my take on trying to find out what band conditions are like. Thanks for watching this video. You take care. Thanks for your support, by the way. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.